It's just two more miles to the lift bridge at Houghton Hancock, the biggest on the Great Lakes. Just past the bridge, we stop at Hancock to top up the diesel and stretch our legs. It's another three hours of motoring to the end of the canal, where we'll tie up for the night and learn lesson number one. It's at Portage Entry, a small village and harbor where we run aground for the first time. A local with a sport fishing boat pulls us out of the mud and we're ready to call it a day. 24 hours after leaving Schooner Bay, 32 since we packed the van and left the Twin Cities, we tie up at the half mile long concrete pier at Portage River Harbor of Refuge. Our neighbors are three well-seasoned whitefish boats, an Army Corps of Engineering tug, and two massive barges, the kind used as work platforms for dredging cranes. A few locals are fishing near the parking area and boat ramp at the west end of the pier. There's a nice picnic area a hundred yards or so back from the water. It's a gorgeous evening. We relax and enjoy the facilities. All swimming in Lake Superior. Captain Steve claims that this, this is the premier outhouse in beautiful Upper Peninsula, Michigan. Outstanding in its cleanliness and its stately architecture. The lockable option on the door. The lock on the double roll dispenser. The acoustics could use a little work. Paul suggests that it could use a little more light inside. It's awfully hard to read. All in all, a quality experience in a beautiful anchorage on the Portage River. At dusk last night, a man in an inflatable putted over to us to find out where we're from and where we're going. His story is that he and his wife own Jacobsville Lighthouse, just a mile north of here. 
The lighthouse was built in 1870, marking the entrance to the Portage River. It was decommissioned and replaced by the Keweenaw Waterway Lower Entry Light around 1920. He said they converted the lighthouse to a B&B &B in 2005. Oh, look at that beauty. We decided to cruise by it this morning for a quick look. He also said Copper Harbor at the top of the peninsula was just a half day from here. We consider it and check the charts. We scratch our heads. A half day only makes sense if you remember a day is 24 hours. We set course for Big Bay. Paul bought a new handheld GPS just three days before our trip. Five hours to our destination. ETA 308. How can that be? Oh, ETA next turning point. 17 nautical miles. It takes a genius, a genius, and someone with opposable thumbs to make this work really well. And advanced planning to make it work even better. Wayne pondered why the boat's onboard GPS would only tell us no fix. If you rely on electronics, it's good to have a backup. After a couple hours of motoring, there's finally enough wind to set sails. But the jib doesn't want to unfurl. Let me check to see if we have a current flop or something up here. Retensioning the jib halyard seems to do the trick. One thing any sailor will tell you, in light wind, as soon as you set sails, the wind seems to disappear. The new Hibbert to the battery down there for the nice sound engine. Got the new nice sound engine. I got two bucks off on that one. Say, you guys got any job openings? I don't have one of them. I can splice the videotape. I've been doing it all my life. Here's how you do it this is videotape. Oh, let's go.